Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I will show you how to create a workflow for our automatic payment program. So for the transaction F110. So meaning that once we execute our payment proposal, then this proposal can only be processed by certain users and converted into the actual payment. Okay, let's go back for now. And we start with the transaction code SWDD. You can see this little pop-up, just click on enter. And now you are here in the workflow builder. The only thing you need to do is you need to enter here under the workflow area, the following workflow. So pause the video, enter it over here. And then over here, it should say display pay M P R O P W F one. This is the standard workflow. So the only thing you need to do is you need to go to the change mode and then you need to click here on create and activate runtime version. In the lower left hand corner of your screen, you should now see workflow definition saved and activated successfully. This was the first step. Next off, we navigate to the transaction code slash n s w e 2 hit on enter. And over here, we search for our workflow. So click on position, then insert the object category CL, the object type CL payment proposal WF. The event is created and the receiver type is our workflow. So the one we activated before, click on enter. Here you can see the workflow, double click on it. And here make sure that the linkage activated check mark is hit and then save. This will then trigger that the workflow is fully activated and also functioning. So far so good, we activated the workflow and also we enabled the linkage. We can also check this via the transaction code slash and PFTC, hit on enter, then click on the symbol over here, click on the search help, start the search. By the way, the search is a bit buggy, so you can't just insert over here the workflow, but you need to search in the whole list. And also make sure that your workflow template is selected. Let's scroll down up until we find our workflow. This one over here, double click on it, hit on enter, and then inspect the details, click on triggering events, and over here you should see the status active and everything should be green. The binding should exist. This is it for now. Now we will define the so-called agent determination. So therefore we navigate to the transaction code slash n f110 w f r. Hit on enter. And here you can see that we need to define some more information for our payment workflow. Click on new entries. First of all, we need to select the paying company code. In our instance, it will be 1010. The currency and country are filled automatically out of the company code details. By the way, I have another video explaining you how to create a company code. I will leave you the link in the description of this one. So make sure to check it out. Then we will set the workflow to active over here. And we need to select the payment methods for which the workflow should be valid. So select the search help. And in my case, I will do it for direct debit for foreign bank transfer and also for SEPA credit transfer. Click on continue and that's basically it. This means that the workflow will be triggered for documents we posted in finance with those payment methods over here. Now double click on the subfolder called agent determination and then click on new entries. Here we must provide a number and actually let me scroll up a bit so that you can see the full screen because here you can see note the recommendations for the rules for agent determination. I advise you to click here on view details and here you can see some advices SAP gives us. So first of all, SAP says that we should use large numbers like 1000, 2000 and so on. This is because let's imagine that we inserted 10 agent determination rules and later on we want to include more rules in between. So for instance, rule 1001, rule 1002 and so on. So by that we have here some space between the rules. Then you can see you can assign up to five agents to each rule. An agent can be a user, a job or an organizational unit. We will see this in a second. So we can define multiple agents per rule. And we can also enter up to two conditions for each rule. This we will also see in a second. Furthermore, over here you can see we should use the highest number to create a rule without specifying conditions. So this means that if no other rule applies, then the business partners for whom we process the payment run will be assigned to exactly this agents we specify as a so-called dummy agent. Let's say it like that. Okay, let's close this view, provide the first number, 1000, and now we select a field name. So for instance, we can say here, we want the agent determination by supplier or also total amount. Let's say supplier first, then we provide our suppliers, 
let's say from 1 million to 2 million. And then we would say here that payment runs for those business partners should be assigned to a specific agent. So click here on the search help and then select user for instance. This will be the SAP user. I will take my own one and that's it. Now for next line, let's say number 2000, we could also say four suppliers with a range of 2 million and one up until 3 million, another user should be found. Let's just take another one and that's basically it. You could also say something as said, like the total amount should be from 5,000 to 10,000, 10 to 20,000 and so on. So you can also make this amount based, which will be the requirement for lots of companies. For now, we will leave it as is. Now let's provide one more number, 9999, without any fields. And we will just say with that, if no method is found, then those payment proposals should be assigned to tester one. Now you can see over here, we could also add additional criteria if necessary. And also we can assign more agents to each of the rules. And if you hit those indicators, then additional columns will appear. For now, we will leave it as is. Click on save. The data was saved. And this is basically it. Now let's actually see this in action. So I created a simple open item for a business partner in the background already. So let me quickly show this to you via slash n fp03. Let's inspect this document. This is a simple document I posted with transaction code fp60. And you can see over here, we have our supplier account 1,387,000. The item is due. So meaning that if we now go to a payment run via slash n f110, and we create a new payment proposal. So let's give it a run date and identification, enter the parameters. So our paying company code, this is also the one for which we activated our workflow, the payment methods, the next posting date. And then in the account section, we will just select our supplier. And that's basically it. Scroll up a bit, go to the additional log, make the best practice settings. By the way, I explained to you all of this in my playlist for the automatic payment run. I will leave you the link in the description of this one. So make sure to check this playlist. Then we will save the parameters, go to status. And now be aware that I'm logged on with the tester one. If we now go to schedule proposal, start immediately in schedule, the proposal is now running and now the workflow was triggered. So if I click on edit proposal, then you can see a pop-up window appeared. And over here we can see for the supplier from 1 million to 2 million, the work package was found and assigned to the user I'm logged on with. Now we can click on this button over here to display the proposal. We can click on this button over here to view the payment list. We can click on this button over here to edit the proposal if necessary. Or if we scroll to the right, you can see that we can confirm the proposal or retain it. For now, we will click on confirm. You can see last package was confirmed, further processing no longer possible. This is fine, click on continue. And then click here on continue. And this is it. The payment proposal is done and we can execute the payment run. Start immediately and schedule. One more thing, now you have seen that with this user, I was able to edit and also to confirm or reject the payment proposal. However, I created another payment proposal in the background. So let me show this to you. And now I'm logged on here with the other user, tester2 in this instance. And as you can see, the payment proposal was created. However, if I click now on edit proposal, you can see that I'm not authorized to edit or confirm this payment proposal over here. I can only display it. This is because the agent determination found that the business partner is within the range from 1 million to 2 million. And as you remember, this user over here I'm logged on with was assigned to business partners with the number 2 million one up until 3 million. So this means that we are not the right agent in this instance and we can't process this payment run. Okay, this marks the end of the video. I hope you liked it. It took a lot of effort. So I would really appreciate if you subscribe to the channel, activate the bell, and also subscribe to my Patreon. The link is in the description of my channel or also in the description of this video. Thanks a lot and see you next time.